it has to do with the uh, gold gate as it is being called a jet that is still uh, detained at the Kenneth Kaunda International Airport by the Drug Enforcement Commission. This is because the train was, uh, the aircraft was carrying contraband, and this is uh, fake gold, as reported by the Drug Enforcement Commission. Firearms, uh, among other things, that were quite suspicious. But what is also interesting about this story is the number of foreign nationals that have been uh, detained in relation to this and in fact charged and arrested some of them expected to appear in court well most recently we saw um, a report by their lawyer that they were all ill and well uh, we also got news just yesterday of the arrest of uh, journalists that uh, a journalist that covered this story from egypt why is Egypt uh, an important part of this conversation? Well, that's simply because some of these arrested individuals are Egyptian nationals. And the recent Goldgate sc scandal has brought some shocking revelations to light. Recently, uh, uh, we heard the report of the implication of some Egyptian nationals believed to be army officials and so we're going to talk about this in detail as we're joined by egyptian journalist who is uh, going to talk to us um, via video conferencing to get more detail into this and also just uh, analyze the freedom of the press uh, in that country especially now that we're talking about the detention of this uh, uh, specific journalist. So Egyptian journalist uh, Hossam El Hamalawi is joining us from Berlin in Germany to talk to us about this. Thank you so much Hossam uh, for talking to us on this but based on uh, you know what you've heard and the communication that you've had uh, with journalists on ground in Egypt about this story how big is it uh, back home and uh, how much are people talking about it? Um, just in case your viewers do not know, uh, since the 2013 military coup in Egypt, uh, the freedom of uh, press is non-existent in the country at this point. Uh, most of the major outlets, uh, whether they are websites, uh, TV stations, radio channels, they are all... Uh, officially owned by the Egyptian intelligence uh, service or the Mukhabarat, as we call it in, in Arabic. So whatever news are covered or not covered, they come via directives from the security services. And up until this moment, there isn't a single word written about this in any Egyptian newspaper in any Egyptian uh, TV, and we actually got the initial news from, from the Zambian uh, uh, media. Now, what happened is that um, the government, they basically uh, unleashed on us some of the internet trolls and some of the pro-regime um, influencers in order to, to try to spread some fabrications about the story like uh, this plane is not Egyptian and then they changed the story into that this plane never took uh, off from Egypt and then they changed the story into this plane belongs to the Muslim Brotherhood and not uh, anyone else. However, independent uh, media fact checkers who are very few at this point in Egypt in addition to social media users and some activists in exiles have come forward to try to uh, get more information building on what the Zambian media has already revealed uh, uh, for us. And unfortunately, one of the journalists who were covering this story on Facebook, since again, we do not have independent media at this point, uh, was uh, arrested by the Egyptian uh, security services early Saturday morning. They raided his house. They assaulted him. They assaulted his wife. They threatened uh, to harm their two-year-old uh, son and forced him to log on to Facebook in order to delete some posts 
networks that had information about the uh, uh, some of the detainees in, in Lusaka. Uh, and he disappeared for two days, but thanks to the pressure on the Egyptian regime, in addition to the public outcry that happened internationally, he was released uh, uh, last night. So this is uh, the latest uh, that I have on this uh, issue. Mm. Well, do you think that uh, based on the stories, I mean, I know that uh, some of these stories were, were deleted and, and like you put it, there's, you know, a, a lot of heavy handedness um, towards the media. But do you think that the fact that this has come to light and people were talking about even his arrest, that there's a likelihood that people might have more interest in this uh, scandal? Definitely. Um, social media is still not under the full control of the regime. So there is always a room for us to uh, try to find information or to discuss news that the intelligence service uh, has deliberately uh, tried to uh, basically kill that story. So from the revelations that social media users and independent fact checkers have managed to find out is the identity and the jobs of some of the Egyptian detainees mm. uh, in that case. And it has been shocking uh, for us. Now, one of them, whose name is Muhammad Abdul Haq Muhammad Gouda, it turned out that he's the former military att assistant military attaché in the Egyptian embassy in Washington, D.C. Uh, previously. It's still unclear if he's still in the service or is he retired. Another person whose name is Yasser Shishtawi, it turned out that he is uh, uh, an officer in Unit 777, which is an elite counter-terror military unit in Egypt. And people have circulated uh, photos of him uh, in military uniform. Again, it's unclear if he's still in service or is he retired. Uh, another person uh, whose name is Michael Adel Michel Botros, it turned out that he is a military contractor and he owns uh, a security firm that is registered in Britain and it provides uh, consultancies for militaries around the world. And the last person whose identity has been revealed um, is uh, Walid Rifat Fahmi Botros, who turned out to be a former police officer. Now, this caliber of people being together on the same plane, this really raises so many questions. Uh, what are they doing? And at this point, there is no official statements from the Egyptian uh, uh, government. And people are left to speculate that it might be some intelligence related operation or maybe, but who knows, but it's definitely something fishy. Mm. Finally, uh, as we as we let you as we let you go, my, my question is, and I, and I think that you partly answered it just now, but do you think that government is, um, I don't know, threatened by the revelation of these people? And based on the pressure that might be coming from the citizens, do you think that they'll be able to issue a statement on this? They will have to issue a statement at some point. Um, and not just because that there is so much pressure on them from uh, the social media users and the citizens who are asking about this, but this is snowballing into an international scandal. So I expect that once the, um, the detained suspects appear in court and the story starts getting more international coverage, that they will be forced to, to issue some explanation. Uh, now, based on our history with this Egyptian regime, they are hardly transparent. They lie and fabricate all the time, but they will have to present their own official side of the story at some point soon.
Thank you so much uh, for talking to us, Hossam, there, uh, giving us an update on the uh, huge, uh, much talked about scandal here in Zambia involving some Zambian nationals, uh, Egyptian nationals, and Spaniards. And this uh, has been one of the uh, biggest um, uh, scandals, and uh, quite shocking, really.